everybody, or should I say buongiorno? That was a little cringy. Moving on. So I went to Italy a few weeks ago with my friend, which was a wonderful trip. <laughs> We went to five different locations, one of which we are painting today. I wanted to make a whole travel video about my travels in Italy, but it was so hot that the last thing that I wanted to do was film. Instead, I just kind of tried to soak all the beauty in without collapsing from heat stroke. So this will be a little Italian painting series where in each episode I will use a photo that I took from each of the locations that we went to to create a sketching process slash urban sketch slash speed paint out of it. If you want to know more about what urban sketching is then you can check out my last video. So this is technically not a real urban sketch because I'm not out on location but what can I do? I'm not in Italy anymore. <laughs> I again want to preface this with I am a complete beginner <laughs> but I think there is value in documenting my journey and it was very very fun to make this speed paint so yes I hope you enjoy it and thank you for being here welcome to the process today's reference photo is from Venice one of the many 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 beautiful streets that I found there as you can see, I made a few pencil lines before I started the ink component, just so I can get the perspective right and get a sense of the composition. I actually sketched out on a smaller sheet, just a rough outline of the composition before I started on this bigger sketchbook, just to get a feel for it. I'm using a Hanne Müller A5 landscape sketchbook, by the way. I have quite a messy style and that's deliberate. I'm trying to not worry too much about making every line perfect. I'm just trying to simplify what I can see because the reference, as you can see, is quite complicated. There are a lot of overlap in the architecture and I couldn't possibly fit all of the lines in the correct place. So my aim is to capture the essence of what I can see without worrying about every single line and every single angle being exactly right. As long as the main perspective is kind of coherent, it doesn't really matter if some of the lines are wonky. This section of the video is really out of focus and blurry, but I promise I fix it later on. Another thing to note about the way that I sketch is, even though I'm using a pen, I'm not using it like a traditional fine liner. I'm not just making straight bold lines with it. I'm more so using it like a pencil. I'm holding it quite loosely. I'm varying the pressure that I use to get some finer lines and some thicker lines. I don't mind if I go over the line many times to get a sketchy kind of gritty feel. That's actually my intention. I'm using Micron fineliners by the way, this one that I just swapped to is a 005, the previous one I think was a 01 or a 02. I'm just using this thinner one to add in a few finer details, but usually I do sketch with a 0.1 or a 0.2. And now, here we are at the fun part, the watercolour. Most of my brushes are from Pro Art, and they are the Proline brushes. I'm using a number 12 round and a number 8 round throughout this video, and I don't think I use any other brushes. My watercolors, by the way, are the Winsor Newton Cotman set, so the student grade ones. They were very cheap, and I've made very good use of them, although I am very excited to upgrade to some different brands in the coming months. My aim for the initial washes of watercolor is just to get paint on the page and not worry too much about making it look good. I just want to cover as much as possible. As soon as all the white on the page is gone, I kind of feel better about doing whatever I want to and I feel less anxious about ruining the page by getting paint on the wrong parts because the page is already covered. So I recommend to just go in and be fearless and just splash whatever you want onto the page. I'm currently doing the greenery on the right, which was a really fun part to do. I really like the end result. I really struggle with foliage, but I think this time I really just went in with a bunch of different shades and tried to emphasize the contrast between the light and the dark areas, which made it look a little bit better than it usually would. Mm -hmm. 
Here I'm going in with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. Taria from Urban Sketching World, who is my urban sketching hero, I will link her YouTube channel below. Um, she loves these pens and I basically take her word as gospel when it comes to urban sketching. So I thought I would try them out and ever since I bought them I've been using them in every single urban sketch that I make. These pens have India ink, which is a waterproof ink, so I can use them hand in hand with watercolour and they won't bleed, which is great. And they also don't bleed through the page, which I love too. I'll talk a little bit more about why I use pens alongside watercolour later, but for now I have moved on to the water. My aim with the water is to have a mixture of seamless blending, but also to retain some of the brush strokes because doing so makes it look more like water. Again, I return to this later. I really like some of these dark brush strokes that I've done and I think in this clip I actually blend out some of them but I go back in later and re-emphasize them and I think that really does make it look like water rather than just a blended mass of colors. Here I'm whacking out my Winsor & Newton designer gouache to add a bit of white to the center part because I didn't like how dark I had made it and I wanted to go over it and make it look brighter so that the lighting was a bit more accurate. You might have noticed how throughout this entire process I'm jumping around a lot. I'm not committing to one section and finishing it before moving on to the next. I just kind of intuitively go with what I feel like doing. So here I'm scratching the surface of the wall to give it a bit of a worn out brick texture. And yeah, I jump around a lot and I think that's the best way to paint. Just do whatever you feel like doing rather than forcing yourself to finish one section because sometimes when you take breaks and go back to it at a later stage it actually ends up looking better because you've had time to think about it, develop some ideas, take a break from it. And painting is about having fun, not forcing yourself to do one section before moving on to the next. It's not so rigid, so yeah, just have fun with it, I guess. While I was rambling on just now, I added in the shadow underneath the foliage, I added in the shadow of the buildings, I also lifted some paint off the top of the buildings to give more contrast when I added the shadow. Watercolour is quite forgiving in the sense that it does allow you to go in with a wet brush and gently rub it over an area that you've already painted to lift some of that paint back off and it's very useful for lightening areas slightly and that's what I did at the top of the buildings on the left. I'm now going back to the Pitt Artist pens that I was talking about before. The main reason why I like to use felt tip pens alongside my watercolour is simply for the control that it gives me. Watercolour can be quite unpredictable and the washes can kind of bleed everywhere on the page, which is amazing. But to complement that, I like to use a tool that gives me quite a lot of control. So with these pens, I can decide very intentionally where I want the shadows to go, where I want extra dark emphasis to go, they are just very, very good for increasing the contrast of the sketch, especially when paired with a white uniball pen, a gel pen or some white gouache. At this stage, I'm just adding in the final details. I went in with a thicker fine liner, a 08, to re-outline some of the lines that got a little bit washed out looking after I added the watercolour. I wanted to emphasize the objects that are in front of everything else, so the boats I gave a little bit of a thicker line to give the appearance that they are in front of everything else, and also the walls that are in front of the other walls I gave them a slightly thicker line, just to add a little bit of depth. Mm -hmm. 